Hey, this is Jeff from Tenacourt, and I just wanted to talk a bit about appendix carry and really kind of history of appendix carry and Tenacourt development of holsters. You know, back in the 1800s, there were folks carrying guns, and it was common for people to put guns um, basically forward to the hip. Continuing on in the early 20th century, that's a thing with revolvers and other stuff carried forward to the hip, basically between the hip point and the belt buckle. It's very low profile, it's easy to conceal, it's easy to access whether you're seated in a car or not. So appendix carry has been around for a long, long time. Um, so anyone who tries to tell you that it's a new fad, they don't understand the historical context for it. Certainly there was a time period where hip carry for modern concealed carry of a gun was more prevalent. In the 80s and 90s and through the early 2000s, it definitely had a push. Um, and there's some folks who think negatively about appendix carry. I would say probably it, it started to be pushed on the scene by Todd Green and the folks at pistoltraining.com and then um, Pistol Forum and a few companies that they reached out to to help design different options for appendix carry, more intelligent, more sophisticated options. So people for a long time had been doing just a regular, normal, concealed holster that was a hip holster, would basically turn the attachment so it was a vertical carry and just throw it up there. But the problem was obviously the printing of the gun. And so like, I think it's custom carry concepts and the Shaggy was an earlier kind of purpose-built appendix carry holster. Another one would be Garrity Gun Leather. I forget the name of that holster. Um, but those are two earlier holsters. And I believe, you know, I'm sure there's folks out there who have much more knowledge of this than I do. I know my friend Simon was involved in some of that. Um, and then, like I said, Todd Green and, and kind of the whole group of people in that space were involved with that. And that was really kind of where I first started considering appendix carry. And I would say that's probably like early to mid um, 2000s is when that started to develop. Personally, I started carrying appendix pretty regularly um, and exploring with that around 2010. And that was probably three or four years after I had started playing with various holster designs. For us at Tenacore, early holster designs were ARCS holsters. Um, and so we were trying to, as a hip carry person, trying to kind of model a leather pancake holster and the durability and concealment of that and trying to figure out how to do that in a intelligent way. One of the disadvantages we saw with people who had pancake style holsters with bolt on attachments, the bolt on attachments would break, they'd fall off, there was all sorts of trouble and we didn't see those as durable enough. Most of our development focus from 2006 to 2010 was with strong side hip pancake style holsters. And so I started playing with stuff around 2010-ish um, with a various versions of inside the waistband holsters. Some of the earlier versions, so like this guy right here was an earlier version. So this is a fold over holster chopped at the muzzle. There's no body contour or wedge on here. Um, I'm using a wedge here above the trigger guard to help cam it in. in. And then this is a Kydex uh, loop. Um, and one of the things I'm trying to do here is like, how do I make this as low profile as possible? So trying to get it to sit close to the body. And actually, if you see on here, the loop is oriented differently than most people's loops. Um, in an effort to try to get everything concealed. And that, I would say that was a big effort. From my standpoint, the value of appendix carry is not really the speed of things or even weapon retention. I think it's that those are both arguable, um, but it's more the convenience of carry um, and the concealability of it. So that was one of the first ones. I then kind of migrated to clips and played with different clip designs. So this again, doesn't have a body contour or wedge on the back has a little bit of a wedge here above the trigger guard, and then it has a spring steel luggage clip here. Um, and the nice thing at the time, this was probably the most robust and durable clip out there available um, because it's a wider clip and it's pretty durable. And one of the big things that I wanted to do that we have now in the Velo and other holsters is have this ride height adjustment. So I was playing around with slots and how do you get this to adjust in right height. So that was pretty important. Another one that I played with, so this has like a body contour on it. You know, this is just molded blue gun type stuff pressed in a foam thing. Um, so I got some kind of a body contour wedge going on here. I have some wedging here, but then I cut the middle out of this clip and cut the bottom off and then basically cut a slot in there so that you can have two screw holes and this can slide up and down. And that was my attempt, some first attempts at playing with 
height adjustment. And really, well, other people had height adjustment, but it was usually like three eighths or half inch increments. And you'd have like two points. And I just didn't see that as, it was, everything was either too low or too high. Um, and I wanted that slot adjustment that was really important. Another one I played with was doing an integrated wing like this. Um, so I actually carried a holster like this with the integrated wing here for probably a good year, year and a half. And it probably took a year before this broke. Um, and this worked really well. Like here there is like a molded body contour in here. It's got the wing on here and it worked pretty well. It was kind of a pain in the butt to make. And then eventually we kind of went to the, the Velo Gen 1. Single holes on the top, it had a camming bar integrated into it. So instead of a wedge here, just this little nubbin thing here. And actually the first person I saw that did a bar like that instead of a larger ramped wedge was John Houtman at Filster. Um, they played around with that with one of their holsters and I asked him about it and he said it held up really well. Um, and then we started playing with it and it seemed to work well for us and what we try to do. So, and this wedge is basically, it's, I mean, it's very much a wedge. It is a, a angled block with like the corners filleted and that's it. And then if you look at the holes here, the holes are just two vertical holes. There was no real ride height adjustment. So basically we couldn't figure out a good way to do it. And this is before discrete carry concepts. And so, and we were basically limited to the clips available on the market. So there's one position for the clips and one position for the loops. And this lasted, I wanna say, I don't know, we released this in probably January, or February of 2018. And shortly thereafter is when Discrete Carry Concepts launched and released their stuff. For this Gen 2 Velo, has the same wedge, we didn't change that at all, um, but we were able to collaborate with Discrete Carry Concepts and come up with the T1 clip and integrate the slots into the clip. And up until that point, I don't, I mean, that was an idea that obviously I had a long time ago that I was playing with, like probably a good eight years prior, six, eight years prior. Um, but I don't recall there being people who were doing slots and clips. There might've been folks out there doing it. And really most, you know, a, a lot of people want to say, I was the first to do this, or I was the first to do that, or someone else is copying me. You know, mostly that is all just a bunch of nonsense. Um, all of the ideas that people have have been done before. And the idea that simultaneous development can't happen somewhere else is also kind of silly that you're like the only person who's smart enough to know how to do this thing. I mean, it's kind of arrogant. Um, and what, what the uniqueness happens, not because you genuinely created something that no one on earth has ever thought of, but more you look at the problem a different way and you're able to take pieces of different solutions and combine them together in a unique way that gets a level of performance that maybe other products don't have. Um, and that's mostly, I, I, you know, hopefully that's what we're doing. Uh, and I think most of the people out there that are doing different things, that's what they're doing as well, if they're, at least if they're honest with themselves. And so the idea that we're reinventing things is, is really kind of silly most of the time. Um, there certainly are, I'm sure there's some people that come up with totally new novel concepts that have never been thought of before. Um, but at some point we're all working in the same world with the same stuff and, and with the same guns and there's only so much we can do that's different. With the T1 clip, I know that the folks at DC, DCC were thinking about a slotted version and so after the T1 clip they later released the adjustable mod 4. The slots in the T1 clip and the short size of that was something that we hadn't really seen before. And so it required this unique hole pattern. Um, and at that time we were using, so we went to the T1 clip, we had the molded camming bar, we had a molded wedge thing going on, but then we had circle backers. And so you can see a Gen 2, a Gen 1 Velo has vertical ovals, and then a Gen 2 Velo is gonna have, the clip points are angled, um, and they're gonna be an oval still, and then up here it's gonna be this weird triangle thing, because we're still using circle backers that had trouble with spinning and stuff. And so that was the Gen 2. And the Gen 3 Velo, so Velo 3, had DCC clips on it. The sweat guard, the full sweat guard, the sweat guard we made, we ended up making wider. And so we went taller on it on this side to give more protection on the red dot. Um, and then we went to the captured backers. So square nuts on the T1 clips and then the trim posts up for the loops. And so that was the big change. And at this point we still have a pretty 
square looking wedge. Finally, the Gen 4 Velo. Uh, in the Gen 4 Velo, the biggest change there is going to be to the from a wedge to the body contour. So figuring out that more organically shaped features on the back side of the holster are better for comfort and for concealment. So in the body contour shape, depending on the whole the gun size, uh, has evolved over time, and I would continue to I think it'll continue to evolve. Um, so we will at some point do a Gen 5 Velo. We have a variety of ideas and things we've played with to try to integrate that into the Velo 5, you know, hopefully soon, um, but we certainly no timeline and no promises on that because everything always takes way, way longer um, than we want it to. So that is a little history of kind of Tenacore and our development of a dedicated appendix carry holster.